Welcome back to Cigar Talk. I'm your host, Rob Jones. We've got Brian Falconer back in the studio after a little hiatus. We're glad to have you back, brother. How are you? Hey, man, I'm doing good. Doing good. Awesome, man. So how was your trip, man? I know it wasn't, you know, one of the reasons you want to go. You had to go to the funeral. Your yeah. grandmother passed. Yeah. We're sorry to hear that. Thank you, man. And, but on the flip side, I mean, you got to spend a lot of time with family. Yes. And it was really a celebration of your grandmother's life. Yes, it was. She had a long, good life. 96 of them. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get near that. <laughs> Just letting you know right now. now. God might punish you and take you to 96. I, oh, wow. <laughs> He's going to be like, and... You're not going to know who you are. <laughs> You're going to sit there in the chair and just doodle. <laughs> That's right. All right. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how we ended up going that way. <laughs> anyway, we're glad you're back. Thank you, bro. Thank Good, you, safe bro. trip. Yes, and it was. So you got big news also. You're buying a house. Yes. We talked a little bit about that last time. Yes. And so, I mean, you're just busy. <laughs> As a Even if you don't want to be, <laughs> and I don't want to be, right. but it's just like stuff just it's, it's just coming at me, coming at me, coming at me. And I got to keep moving with it because if I don't, I'm gonna miss out on something. Some like days that. there's a drought, and some days Ooh, there's a flood. You know what? Take flood. advantage oh. of the good weather. Oh heck yeah! And Unlike what it. we have in Texas right now, could we get out of the high 90s now? <laughs> I'm ready for the 70s, but I'll take ah, the 80s. You I'll know take what the I mean? 70s. I'm a love. I love the 70s. Cold. I, mean, I, I'm cold. I love the cold. I, I dude, do. 65 to 72, <sighs> and I don't need heat, and I don't, I don't need, need AC. AC. Tell the truth. Tell the Outside truth. that realm, it just depends. Might have got out of the shower. I need a little heat. <laughs> got you. You know what I mean? <laughs> said a little heat. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let's jump on it and talk about what we're smoking. I'm going to let you go first. I am smoking the Cattle Baron. Cow, which, what, what was it called? Well, the oh. Wait, don't move. So tell us what you're smoking over there. Man, I'm smoking the Cattle Baron Cowboy. See, let me see that, that little bag you got there. Oh, the bag. Yeah, that, that's from. So I've smoked Cattle Baron. It's been a long time, but it looks like they've done a complete rebrand Re on the uh, cigar bands and i'll tell you what they did a great job mm -hmm. i don't remember what the old ones were but they were nowhere near as nice <laughs> as they are now so yeah i mean when you i remember seeing them last time it was like uh they don't look very good you got you and they wow i look, mean even the, the taste of this stick man is wow because Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you, are. you even you even marked off the toast, and you was like, man, that smells good. Yeah, I was over there picking out <laughs> a cigar, and all of a sudden I got a whiff of like a nice that's toasted, you know, mm, almonds, nuts. Yeah, and that's what I'm like. I'm like, dang, and then it's cedar. You can taste, you can really taste the cedar, and it, the retro hair, I got a floor. I was like, hold up, wait a minute. This smell like flour. It tastes like flowers. Now I've never eaten a flower in my life. Well, yes, I did when I was a kid. We used to eat daisies. <laughs> we used to run out the field and grab daisies and chew on them all day long. But hungry? Yeah, because you know you couldn't come back in the house. Yeah, yeah but I didn't eat daisies. Dude, dude, we ate daisies. What's them little the, the banana looking uh things? But <laughs> they weren't. <laughs> The green, they were green, they were small, and they had oh, the Oh, I, I thought you were say, shoot, man, we used to go down to the uh, green bean field and start eating oh, we beans didn't have right a, out the we field. We didn't have a green bean field. But we used, snaps? We used to go and uh, snatch ears of corn, though. Oh, well, you did that, uh, too, man. It's just something about fresh corn, even though it wasn't cooked. That shit still tasted so damn good. It's sweet. Yeah. It's real sweet. Oh. Oh. Yeah. All day long. But anyway, the cowboy is a good smoke, man. It really is. So I'm smoking the uh, Flathead V21. It's first time for me. Larry's had a few of them. Yeah. And anyway, I decided I'd finally smoke one tonight. And you know what? It's a 6 by 60 It feels like it's a little bit too big for me. It feels that way. And the smoke so far, and I mean, I'm just maybe five puffs in, maybe six. But it is super light. I expected this to be way darker, and whenever I was talking to Larry, he was like, it's lighter than I thought it would be. Oh, Dude, man. it is way lighter than what gotcha. I would. I, I thought this would be, well, you've had the Flathead yes. 770 and the 660. That's a the bold stick, stick with a lot of flavor, yes. and right now, I'm not getting a whole lot of flavor from it. I'm going to take my time to smoke it, Okay, but 
it's just real light. Okay. I'm not, and it's burning good. I'm as no we complaints. See. Yep, I as mean, we I, see. you know, as long as my cigar is smokable, I'll <laughs> keep smoking on <laughs> it. Keep them smoking on it. So, and then we're drinking tonight. We Uh-oh. got the uh, old Knob Creek Knob nine Creek, year. Knob I believe Creek. it's a hundred proof, right at a hundred. And you know what? So far, I enjoy it. You enjoy it? I, I do don't too. know. I, I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the issue. <laughs> we saw you. <laughs> that was not the issue. <laughs> right. Right. What you guys don't know is right before he went down, he said, bottoms up. Yeah, right. No. I didn't know if he was talking about his glass or his. No. <laughs> uh, that was one of them situations where you see a light flash because that knee, I was like, oh, Lord, here go my knee. <laughs> Can't have that happen. But it's all supposed to be able to withstand that. It did. Oh. It did. It okay. just, just hurt. Yeah, and your mind is like, it should hurt, hurt. And I'm like, it's melon plastic. That's why I was sitting down there talking to myself. It's melon plastic. It ain't supposed to hurt. <laughs> ain't weird, no nerves man. in there. Yeah. <laughs> but nonetheless, I'm Yeah, good. but it's still a jar. <laughs> a jar or a jar? A jar. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what the f- <laughs> I said it's still a jar. <laughs> I didn't know if you were saying uh by itself, then jar, <laughs> or the I do word talk a jar. slower than most. You know, <laughs> takes, you know, most people say they talk slow because they're from Texas. It's a natural, you know, draw. Draw. We mm-hmm. speak slower. Mm-hmm. But really, we just use that as an excuse because <laughs> it takes us longer to put our words together up there in our brain. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. I have to speak English now. So anyway, yeah, this Knob Creek's great. I'm enjoying it. You don't even have a glass, or did you already have one? I had one. Okay. I'm not going back. Okay, cool. Well, hey, guys, tonight on the show, we have Ali from Big Smoke Kuwait. Uh, You've probably seen him on Instagram. He's got a badass beard. He's like wearing a Panama hat. He looks like the poster boy for smoking cigars. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like he's taking it back to like old school school. like like the way men dressed in the 20s and 30s you know what i mean yeah wearing a three-piece suit every day yeah every day they didn't walk outside without a suit and a hat on right (laughs) if you did go back in the house and put some clothes on boy what yeah you that's just the way it was was, so anyway i've talked to him for a couple years now on instagram finally got him on the show he owns big smoke Mm -hmm cigar shop and he has a lot of knowledge and it's very interesting on what it's like in kuwait oh yeah my daughter told me a lot about what's like in kuwait kuwait can't drink yeah that yep he he was during the interview drinking tea yeah because can't have alcohol and he said that's basically more popular than coffee over there is the tea is the tea yeah Uh i mean he still drinks coffee yeah but tea that's the big deal over there yeah and i and i was like and I know, like the tea I drink, that's, <laughs> that's not the big thing. Lipton <laughs> is not. What was Nest Tea Plus? Nest tea not plunge. happening over there. So I did that in the game once. What that? The Nest Tea plunge, plunge in the end zone. Yeah, I ran. I ran an eighty yard, and I got to the end zone. I turned around and plunged into the end zone. The referee tried to say, "Well, you didn't. Get, you didn't get on the end zone because I had my feet." On the on the goal line, right outside the goal line, and they was like, "No, the ball went in." My coach kept on the ball went in, the ball went in. I don't care where his feet were. They argued for about two minutes, and then they said, "Touchdown!" <laughs> my coach told me, "Don't do that shit no more." <laughs> he said, "Fall in the end zone after you after he they said, do this." Faulkner. Yeah, no, he said he said Faulkner. <laughs> Faulkner. <laughs> he used to kill me with that. Faulkner. There goes the PG. Faulkner. I, yeah, that said Faulkner. That was you. That was Faulkner. I didn't say the word. That's what my. NCYC, my E6 call. He said, Fuckner, fall in the end zone next time. Don't do that stuff no more. I was like, all right, coach. <laughs> all right. All right. So, anyway, we got Big Smoke in, owner Ali on the show, and great interview with him. And then, you know, what – well, we have breaking news. Breaking news. So – and we don't usually report breaking news. Because nope. we're slow. <laughs> but <laughs> – I the like U.S. That. Congress just passed a bill so. basically banning all tobacco products. And we're going to talk about what that's going to look like. And then, of course, we have our pick six for the week. We didn't get to do that last week because Big no. Boy wasn't here. Uh, but we're going to do that. And before we get to that, though, let's talk about 
Tabanero cigars. Tabanero. Dude. And you know what's cool is I, people are sending me pictures of, hey, look what I'm smoking. Yes. And I'm getting a lot of good feedback. Uh, it's a new great walk. It yeah, is. It it's really is. It's a new is. great walk. Well, you know, Scott smoked the Connecticut last yeah. night, and he raved about it. <laughs> and so far, I am back and forth. I'm like, I love the Connecticut, but that Nero box press is really something nice. Too. I haven't had that one. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm pretty sure you did. The Nero box press? It's Tabanero, but they call it Nero. Nero. Yeah. I'll have to show it to you. Okay. If you haven't had one, you can have one. And if you have had one, then you can still have one. Oh, thank Damn. Hey. Damn. So, <clears throat> anyway, uh, look down in the show notes. You can show click on a show. link. Go on over to Tabanero Cigars. See what they have a large line of cigars. They're a very, I would say, when you say boutique, they mm-hmm. are like the essence it's of boutique. boutique. Yeah. <laughs> it's an Ebor City. Huh? He has People who fled Cuba rolling cigars in the shop in Ebor City. I have to ask this. Yeah. What did you call that city before you learned that it was Ebor City? Wybor. I knew it. Wybor. I knew it. I knew it. Wybor. No. I I said Wybor, and somebody was like, I think it was Deborah. Uh She was like, Ebor? And I was like, like, all right. right. That's what you want to call it. (laughs) But that's a why. It's in Florida. You know where I'm talking about. So anyway, but no, check them out. And there's a link in the show notes. Take you straight over to their website. And then Case Elegance. Oh, look at my hat. Look at my hat. I see that. Look at my hat. hat. Claro. Yeah, they 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 are just knocking it out. Everyone I've talked to a dude. You know, Zeka. Yeah. Do you know what he did for Big Adam? Uh. You know, Big Adam's getting married yeah. October 30th. So, Zeka sent him an Octador. Wow. Uh, I got a I got an anniversary in October. <laughs> I got an anniversary in October, Zeka. <laughs> if you feeling still generous, I'll take an Octador, bro. Dude! Dude, isn't that just something wow. special? Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, and dude... Whenever you're going to buy somebody something for getting married and you want to buy them something special, that tells you what Zeka thinks of everything. Well, well, I was going to say Case Elegance because he's giving a good friend. He he thinks that much of Adam because he's giving him a great gift. True, true. A gift that, that, first of all, it's it's beautiful, man. Right. The Octodore is a beautiful piece of... Dude, yep. no, it ain't up there no more. <laughs> he looked back, and and then it's it's playing into what he likes because he loves sticks, and it's one of those pieces that's gonna last you forever, your lifetime. So he gonna pass it down to his son. His son gonna pass it because with the quality that is made, it's gonna last a couple of generations. Dude, it looks bro. like it was painted by the guy painting black pianos. Oh, it's just it's that, my, that what they, it's not mahogany. What do they call it? Uh, it's there. a deep. Oh, it, it's it's. Now, because you said that, it just went blank <laughs> on me. But it was, it wasn't mahogany. It was like a walnut. But anyway, dude, it's beautiful. And it's beautiful. I, I can say so much. They have a travel humidor now. Uh, have you seen the travel? No, humidor? you're supposed to be showing me. But I'm gonna go look because you said they showed you and they didn't show me. And I, I, I feel kind of a different way. If this dude pulls out, he got to travel. I'm done. This is my last show. <laughs> on cigar talk he has the travel humidor oh my what do you think about that bad boy for your accessories for accessories and then the top thing is for your humidification oh, and then two, three, four, five, six. dude I know, right? Dude. Well, you know, we're giving away one soon. He ain't giving it to me. No. No, we're not. <laughs> but. Larry said give it to me. <laughs> I already did. I'm done. <laughs> no, you I'm don't done. think that's well deserved? <laughs> you see him working over there. 
can't see him over there. <laughs> <laughs> that that four letter word you used was not the one I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> was it work? No, that's what you said. <laughs> Like, I, man, you gave him a case. At, <laughs> you you like Zaka now? Hey, when you, you appreciate him enough to give him a class, gift. right? He's not class, <laughs> but he looks like he's class. <laughs> <laughs> he does have that look about him. This is Pepe Le Pew too. <laughs> <laughs> he's not going to argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, Case Elegance brings it. They, they make some. I mean, just just dynamic man stuff, and man. Dude, if you're looking to give a gift to someone and a you want to knock their socks off, Case Elegance. Look at Case Elegance because the stuff that they carry is top of the line even man if they, stuff. Even if they don't smoke, they got the, the, the travel tote. You mean the man tote, the man bag? Oh, I knew you was gonna go man bag. That's what I tried. Dude, to, I tried to throw you off. Cut with me it. off. I did. Pack. Not <laughs> happening. He's like, I'm not man bag. Dude, you got I the man love bag, my man is, bag. Dude. Oh, I'm Dude, just, I, it's perfect for the weekend. Oh. It's got a it's got a laptop yes. zipper for it. It's got like I mean it's this big, it's perfect for Ooh, like a two or two three, three night. Ba- yeah. Bam. Travel. As we used to say, spin a night bag. <laughs> you got a nice spin a night bag. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you, I had a crappy duffel bag before I had the man bag. I can believe that with you. I did. I can believe it. It was probably I would them jam old, it full. It looked like an old nylon eighties, yeah, <laughs> zip bag net on the side, like like he was in Cobra Kai. Yeah, <laughs> he walked around a Cobra Kai. Bag. That was me. I can believe it. I can truly I believe had the it. mullet too. Oh God! But I can't say that because we had the shag, didn't we, Larry? You never got a shag. Larry had class. The shag was class. No, dude. No. That was like saying the mullet was class. I shag loved it. Was, was not class. Shag was class. So anyway, uh, yeah. If you want to look at Case Elegance, look down in the show notes, and there's a link. You can use two different codes now if you want to get the collecting coin of Cigar Talk and Case Elegance. We have a challenge coin. If you use the code Cigar Talk Coin, they'll send that with your order or. If you already have one, or if you would rather, you can get 10% off just by putting in the code Cigar Talk. So, hey, let's get to, uh, what are you laughing I at? I got to share it. Well, I, hold on. I, I'm going to laugh at myself. Who's that picture of? Me. Okay, that's fine. Let's put it on him for a minute. Let's. See. Oh, my. Look at that blue polyester suit. No, look at that check. Look at that polyester suit. Man, look at that shag. Now, who is that in the picture? (laughs) That's my cousin. That's you and your cousin? Yeah. What, are y'all going to rehearsal or something? No, it was Easter. Easter? Yeah. You look like you're singing in a quartet. No, it was Easter. (laughs) Down at the club. It was Easter. (laughs) It was Easter. Hey, love the picture, man. man. You said that. I was like, a shag was cool. You actually went there. Like I guess it was the mullet for... Us, but you go there, man. I want a European shag. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, Is European. It? Yeah, that's what they called it—the European shag. Never heard of it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> never heard of it. <laughs> next, next. <laughs> so it's your time for your top three of the week. It's pick six time, brother. You sure? Yeah, I'm sure. You positive? Yeah. You want that? Well, I mean, some people want to know. <laughs> Why you say it like that, man? Dog, dude. <laughs> We hey, cool while you're that. looking up your pictures, do you have them already? I mean, yeah. or if you don't know, I can tell a story. Yeah, I got them. Okay. I'm still going to tell the story, but I go know. ahead. Payback room one-on-one. Nice. Out the gate. Out the gate. Nice. You know what you're getting every time. It's that perfect stick. You love it. Yes. You love it. This one is going to be like, ah, but I loved it. Monte Cristo. 1935 anniversary. I don't know nothing about that stick. <sighs> what what kind of stick is it? I mean, is it? Oh, that's a nice looking stick. The foot's got a tear in it, though. It didn't. That's the way the picture took. Let me see. That looked like a tear. Let it's me not see. a tear. Let me see the phone. I don't tear. believe you. I know you don't believe me, but it's not a tear. Dude, that is a tear. It's not a tear. I mean, hey, like, dude. What's wrong? Oh, you. Yeah. 
Yeah, look, tear. dude, that is a tear. That's not a tear. Dude, give me my phone. <laughs> you need glasses if you don't think that's a tear. It wasn't a tear. <laughs> what, what would you call that? It was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, from whoever <laughs> dropped the cigar. Anyway, why, why that's it, a tear. Why, is, why does it have to be I dropped a cigar? Well, ah. I don't know how it happened. I'm just telling you it's a tear. And then the Ashton Symmetry. Oh, great stick. Which was given to us. Why? We'll get to that. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, that was. I already smoked uh, mine too. I smoked mine. That was a great stick. I already smoked the Opus X too. It, I, it's still in the bag. Nice. It knocked out the other one I had at number one. I was like, nope, this is it. <laughs> this nice. Is, this is it. This is it. So that's my three for the week. Good. Good smokes, man. So while you were in St. Louis. You got to smoke some cigars. You take cigars? Did I you took, go find cigars? I took cigars, and when I went, I went to a cigar <clears throat> lounge in Belleville called the Cigar Inn. And I have to say, like I was telling Jay, no, is that is that uh, that's not the one that uh, what's his name goes to? Is it who Redmond's or something? River? No, Riverman's. That's okay. in St. Louis. I'm in Belleville. Oh, gotcha. Illinois. It's called the Cigar Inn, and you know it. Re- it made me remember. It made me remember how much I appreciate the Leaf, and it was a good, it was a great place. It had a live jazz band. You know, you walk in, it had a full bar, and I was asking her what type of bourbon she had. She said, "Well, what do you drink?" I said, "Wellers, uh, Knob Creek." I start I just started naming everything that we drink. She said, "Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it." I was like, "Well, hell, I'm gonna have a good time then." I said, "Where are your sticks?" <laughs> and she said, "Here's the humidor right here." And I walked in, I was like, oh, "Okay." So one person humidor. You walk in, nobody can come in with you. Wow. Because <laughs> it's that, so, so it's that just, small. So you just rotate? Yep, I rotated and dropped down because there were some that were on the floor. But they had a nice selection. They had a few boutiques in there. And, you know, all the names. All the names. All the big names. Yeah, they got, the big, but they probably only got like two or three boxes. And they, and no, it of, was, each, of each. Oh, yeah, of each up there. But the boutiques, I was like, oh, I haven't had one of them. So I got it. I actually have it at home. I can't remember the name of it now. But I bought me a McAuliffe, not a McAuliffe, a Monte Cristo, and a, a Camacho. And I sat there. I got me some well. Now, which Camacho did you get? The orange label. I believe that's the uh, Nicaraguan. Nicaraguan, one. yeah. I got uh, a glass of Wellers. My partners came in. They both got Wellers, too. I was like, oh, so y'all know what you're drinking? So yeah, we don't mess with that cognac. <laughs> I was like, thank you. <laughs> and so we sat there, and it was it was great because they, the live band started playing. And, you know, you get that ambiance. Oh, that yeah. Feeling, that that, that what environment. Kind of, what kind of band was it? It was, it was like jazz. It was a jazz because it was all oh, jazz. Oh, dude. And, man, it was just like, you look back, and you're like, this is cool, you man. Know, there's a jazz lounge in Fort Worth that you can smoke cigars in. I did not know that. We should make a trip up there just for definitely that. for that. Definitely for that. Let me see your light. Sure, definitely sure, for sir. that, man. Because it, it it brings out the atmosphere in the place. Because oh, jazz yeah. is jazz is a, is a musical form that is, you know, it it excites you, but it, it mellows you out. Yes. Because you can just sit back and then when you smoke a stick, you don't want to get too hyped. Right. Because then you you take away from the enjoyment of your stick. You want to sit there and you just want to chill, and that's the type of music that allows you to just. Zone completely out, and that's what I did for like four. We sat there for like four hours, and me and these two guys, we went to elementary, junior high, and high school together. Wow! So it was like that's a forty year relationship, man. Right. So it was like time to, you know, go back, man. It was just it was just great. I really it was one of those opportunities for me being there for the funeral to be to have something else to take my mind off of it. <laughs> well, when, I really appreciated that. I really did. When we get an opportunity, we really should go up to that jazz lounge oh, yeah, in Fort definitely, Worth and definitely. do that. You could take your wife. Yeah, and just sit there and just chill. Man. Yeah, it'd be a good be a good evening. Date night. There you go. Cuz she listens date night. Nice. So, anyway, I I you know what? It was hard narrowing down three cigars for me cuz I have smoked a lot of different cigars yeah. for the entire week. I got you. I smoked a lot of Tabaneros. Mm. I smoked uh, Viva La Vida. Okay. I smoked some Arturo Fuentes. I smoked some uh, A.J. Fernandez, okay. some Roma Craft. Mm. And, I mean, I've just been all over the place. Got gotcha. you. And I've smoked a lot of sticks that I haven't had in a, in a while. while. Uh-huh. So, number one was a gift. When Zeka was here, uh, he gifted me a couple of sticks, and I wish but I could say both of them made the list, but one of them did not. 
even though it should have, from what I understand. <laughs> from what you understand. Well, he gifted me a Baca. And Which one, the Jinga or the Jenga or the? I think it was the Jenga. It was like that, and it was the long one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so anyway, it was the construction sucked. Oh and, man! Hey man, it happens. It happens. You know, not everybody makes. You know, I love that. Bo- right, you know, I and that I was bo- super excited to smoke it. <sighs> and anyway, he told me he wasn't sending me or giving me any more sticks because when he does, they <laughs> yeah, all turn to shit. shit. <laughs> so anyway, but I told him this cigar is on my list. I told him this was a great smoke, and it was the uh, AJ Fernandez. Uh, what is it? The uh, Long Live the King AJ. You know, oh, with Caldwell. Yeah, Caldwell. And anyway, that was a whew, that's a great stick. You took a picture of that. Yeah, yeah. sure did. Yeah. So anyway, that was really good. And then I I actually was going to put the Ashen Symmetry on my list, yeah. but since you had it, I'm going <laughs> to bypass that one because that was really that was a good. Really good stick. Yes, sir. And then I did smoke the uh, original Opus X. Okay. And that didn't make the list. Okay. I mean, it's a great stick. So we don't want. We want your list. I'm just letting you know what I smoked during the week. <laughs> we could be here forever. You smoke three to four a so day. So at 7.35. <laughs> oh, that's how we're going to give away by that. I'm going to get a jar. Uh-huh. And every time I smoke a cigar in here, I'm going to take the band off and put it in there. And then we're going to let the listeners guess how many there are in there for one week of my smoking in the shed. They're going to be amazed. And the closest guest will win a travel humidor from Case Elegance. Now, what if they get it exactly? Then they win. <laughs> I mean, for even on the price is right, if you get the exact price, you get okay, something extra. Okay, you get a dollar. <laughs> you happy now? <laughs> He's going to give you a dollar. <laughs> I'll put a dollar in, in the, the travel, travel humidor, okay? <laughs> I'll. You know what? I'll, I'll probably, you know what? I'm not going to say. Okay. If you get it exactly right, you'll get a little something, something on gotcha, the back end. Gotcha, gotcha. So anyway, uh, I basically I've just named one stick. We no. know that's what I was talking about. Okay, no, 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 I named two. Which two? <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. You kept naming sticks, and we was like, okay, that you know, I, I that's named not the Caldwell list. and I don't remember the. <laughs> Okay, okay, maybe I only did one. <laughs> Let me get another drink first. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. That, you so, understand. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know what? I'm going to go with that Tabanero Connecticut, uh, dude. Okay. Did you smoke one of those? I had one Ooh, because of you. and I, Dude, I'm, I right out the it. gate, you get the pepper. And then it immediately Soon, yes. buttery, smooth, slide in the cream. I, d- I drank a uh, Sumatran coffee with that. And those two played off each other so oh, well. Yeah. It was like. I've been drinking oh, a Brazilian dark roast with it. Oh. You know, that's what I make every morning. It is? Yeah. Yeah, I want Sumatran. Love I love Sumatran. the Sumatran, but that dark Brazilian roast. I might mm, try that. Mm. I have to ask Jay what what day they had the Sumatra. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it with that uh with that Connecticut to see what I get, just to see what I get from it. Nice. So my last pick of the day is last night I was gifted a cigar from Scott, uh-huh. and it was the porcelain from the Black Label Trading Company, which is their Connecticut. Hmm. Very good. Never Very had, good. Never had. Yeah, I I do been, we have that at the least? Yes, yes. Yeah. I've been wanting to try that cigar. But, you know, a lot of times I just like, I want to smoke a Connecticut, but I'd rather smoke this. this <laughs> you know, I love being able to smoke Connecticut's yeah, now, yeah. but sometimes I get overruled with the right <laughs> half of the brain that says, nah, we're going dark. <laughs> the dude, oh, nah, we're going dark. <laughs> so, anyway, that's my three. Uh, next, we got Ali coming up Ali, from Ali. The Big Smoke in Kuwait. You're not going to want to miss his interview. So, Ali, how do you pronounce your last name? Ali, A-L-I, A-L-L-A-M-I. Alami. Alami, gotcha. Alami, yes. thank you. <laughs> and you are in Dubai, right? I'm in Kuwait. Oh, you're in Kuwait. K-U-W-A-I-T. Yeah, for some reason I thought you were in Dubai. 
Uh, I know I saw you last year traveling all over the world. Yeah, yeah. You know, usually we're trying to spread the, the culture of cigars. I know there is so much everywhere, but it's for us in the region. It's something new. I know it's not a new new, but it's a new. It's not already from our culture. So it's a foreign culture. So we need to introduce it. We need to know about it. So I, I like to go to the festival. I like to meet people all around the world. If there is a, uh, what they call it, possibility. It's yeah. a hobby. I like even doing it. And how long have you been doing it? How, uh, it's, it's two kind of question. Is it as a business or a hobby or a smoking? So, well, let's start and go back. How long have you been smoking cigars? I am smoking for 25 years. Wow. And so how did you come about starting to smoke cigars? Usually we sm I was a cigarette smoker and I was working for the oil company. One of my friends introduced me to pipe. Oh, okay. Trying to, uh, well, they call it because you have an idea that cigarettes is a bad habit. So I will introduce you something sophisticated, sophisticated and enjoyable and clean. So he gave me uh, the full package, the pipe, uh, the bag, the poker and everything and the tobacco. And he said, go on, try it. But my only, uh, uh, what they call it, my only option, uh, well, uh, I just want you to quit cigarette. Mm. So I quit and started smoking the pipe for three years. And then uh, one of my uh, family, he was in Cuba and he came and he gave me one cigar. So it's become together now. I enjoyed the, the cigar I smoked. And then I continue smoking the pipe and cigars. But cigars more than they become the pipe occasionally. Yeah, because I smoked a pipe for a little short time. And it's, it's, it's a lot different than smoking cigars. It's yeah, a lot it's, more work, takes more skill, and, yeah. uh, you know, you just can't light up a pipe. It takes some work to do so. You got to, you know, load it correctly. You got to tamp it correctly. You got to light it correctly. Yeah. Whereas a cigar, we light it nice and even all the way around the bottom, and then we're ready to go. Yeah, it's more different. But uh, at least in the basic, you can say it's, uh, it's the same tobacco, little bit different but the mechanism is different yeah it's at least the be quality yeah so how did you swap how did you get over to smoking cigars well, who introduced them to you and have you been smoking cigars for 25 years or have you been smoking for 25 no, years? 25 25 years uh, three years tobacco uh, three years uh, pipe to and tobacco the 22 years is cigar pure cigar with a little bit pipe but cigar was my first choice Okay. So, uh, you know, I was, I told you I was working for the oil company and after finishing the current 20 years working, so we stay at home. When you stay at home, you bother, you bother everybody. <laughs> yes. You like everybody, you become an old lady. So they told me you go out, find something to do. I don't know anything to do beside my work. I have, I have only my hobby. So some of my friends suggested that, okay, why you don't open a shop? You look, you, you, you like cigars. You know, you have the know-how, do it. So uh, I started with a 40 square meter shop, contacted the other uh, cigar manufacturers. We started with Padron, we started with LFD, with Arturo Fuente. I started with the non Cuban because, you know, in my country, everybody's smoking in Cuban. Right. Or if you want to be different and you want to start and continue, you need to be a different. So I started with the non Cuban cigars. And then we, then after we are selling Cuban cigar, but at least we show ourselves, we introduce ourselves as an non Cuban cigar uh, outlet or retailer. So, how was the reception? to non-Cuban cigars? Have they caught on? Did pe Do people enjoy them or people really prefer the Cubans? How does that work? 
the history for the nine Cuban cigars in uh, in our region is only Davidoff. Oh, okay. And yeah, so when we started in 2006, we introduced from Dominican is Arturo Quentin LFD, and from Nicaragua we as we introduced the Patron cigar. So we we make event. We give the people free. People they are coming. We would also we started with Gary cigar from Dominican. So cooperating with them, they come to our country. We make an event. We celebrate. We give cigars. We introduce it right. People try try it and they enjoy it because they don't know it before. They think it's the Cuban and nothing beside the Cuban. But after trying, they saw a big difference in the troll a big variety in the aroma and the flavor, so they enjoy it. So it's continued. So now we have so many brand name Cuban, but still people, they like the Cuban cigars. So we don't want to miss these people and don't miss these people. And we try to more introduction on the name Cuban cigars. Gotcha. So let me ask you this. How far is the closest other cigar shop to your store? In my area, usually when I started in 2006, we were only three companies. Okay. And as three companies who they can, what they call it, they, they uh, import cigars, not only retailers, because there is the domestic retailer. He will buy from inside and sell inside. But for us, we import. So David Oak and the Cuban agent and us. Now, after that, you know, we from 2006, now we have uh, two small shops in my area, one branch for the Cuban guy and another branch is selling non-Cuban non -Cuban cigars. Okay. It's around uh, two kilometers, three kilometers in between. But we are still, when we establish our company, you know, we have a target. After five years, we opened the biggest shop in Kuwait. We are the biggest shop in Kuwait, 250 square meters. Cigar shop, cigar accessories, and a lounge. Oh, so there's a so lounge. It very come and smoke. Of, yes. We make it very difficult to who's coming behind us. Nice. Very nice. Well, and I, we, I, we followed each other now for about two and a half, three years on Instagram. Uh, I love all the different material and content that you post. And one of my favorite of your content of all time was when you went into great detail of showing just how good the counterfeit guys are of making Cohiba counterfeits. They go to great <laughs> extreme measures to look just like the Cubans because they're high dollar, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They spend a lot of money. They hate me a lot. These people, they earn a lot of money and they are working hard on the lack of info between cigar fish cigar smokers. And actually they 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 walk along since they started before they only comfort the, the label and they make it not hundred percent. Now they are making the label hundred percent. They are using the use boxes. That's why now we have uh, what they call it, a campaign, don't throw your boxes, burn them. Oh, wow. Any Cuban cigars, burn them. Because people, they will, actually the dress box, it's more uh, useful for them. They will use the dress boxes, fill them with comfort and sell them. So it's become an idea that we don't sell, even for regular smokers. You destroy the boxes, don't sell them, and don't throw them because people, they will use them again. Yeah, because I remember that video you did. I mean, uh, I don't remember which Cohiba it was, but, I mean, it had, like, serial numbers. It had holograms. It had everything that would make me think that I was buying the legit cigars, but yes. it was not. And where did you find these counterfeit cigars? Were they Usually, uh, people, they've been attacked. I become like a mentor, so the people, they come and cry on my shoulders. So when they come and cry on my shoulders, <laughs> I insist to take pictures and see the cigars. And these people mostly either in their trip or sometimes some smugglers inside the, in the country, they come and sell. 
Oh, okay. Now, last was it last year when you went to uh, the? Uh, I thought you went to Cuba and Nicaragua, and you were just basically touring all over farms. Yes. How was that? Normally, since we started the business, I want, every year I, I I go to the Havana Cigar Festival. And uh, my last trip, it was on uh, 20, uh, 2020. We came in March, actually, 2019, because we go every February, they have the festival in, in Cuba. In Nicaragua, we also we went on the... the uh, before three years, I think we went to Nicaragua for the cigar festival. But after that, you know, it's become the date they become on each other, so we cannot go to both. Go on. But I didn't miss any since we started the business. We didn't miss any cigar festival because you know what? In this cigar festival, you will meet all the people that you have a friendship with them in the in the social media. Beside, you will see what the update. You will see the uh, the magazine people. You see the so even people from the Nicaraguan companies. I met the president of Hoyt in Nicaragua oh, wow. in, a, in one of my trip. Uh, in, in one of my trip to to Cuba. Uh, so it's a good gathering. It's like the what they call it the 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 movie in Cannes or what the the other festival they are doing. You see everybody there. You don't expect everybody you can see them. And it's full of enjoyment, smoking cigars. And this is the idea. So let me ask you this, Ali. What's some, and I was going to ask you, what do you like to pair your cigars with? Uh, I see you. Are you drinking coffee or tea? Normally, I always uh, drink coffee with my uh, pairing cigars. Before last year, I went to Turkey, and when we are sitting with our Turkish cigar aficionado, usually they are pairing with tea. And since I stayed there, at my time was sitting with them and smoking cigar. They are offering uh, a big, uh, what they call it, a glass of tea without sugar. So it was amazing. It's not a, it's the same bearing like to, the espresso, but it's giving you a nice washing for the mouth and zero check the palate to enjoy your smoking. So now, and we are a dry country. We don't have alcohol. So the option is between coffee and tea for me now. I see. And when you drink the tea, I assume it's hot tea. Yes. And hot. so I don't know that much about hot teas. It's not something that we enjoy here in my area. I'm from Texas, by the way. But yeah. we don't really drink hot tea, but is hot tea kind of like coffee from all different parts of the world? So you get different flavor profiles from different teas? Yes. So you can get a, a medium big... tea, a dark tea, a heavy flavored tea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big world, my friend. The tea is more variety maybe or similar to the coffee. There is the white tea, the green tea, the yellow tea, the gold tea, the black tea. There is so much color and expensive. Wow. Highly expensive. There is, there is some, uh, they sell it by grams, and it's very expensive. Wow, grams. So normally, there is a regular tea, not like not like the Lipton tea. I am not speaking at Lipton tea. Right. Lipton tea will become like, what they, like Starbucks coffee. Sorry for the word. But uh, uh, the the normal the leaf tea you will take it as a leaf and you will put it with the hot water and it will reduce and straight down and then it will come and the color it depends uh, how the fermentation for the for the leaves of the tea. Wow! So it's a real delicate art, just like cigars and coffee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mostly the English introduced uh, the, the the English people, the British, who introduced the tea for the world, actually, and by Lipton. But Lipton is an instant tea. The right. other one is very expensive tea, yes. 
Okay, very interesting. I would love to try that. I don't know how I would go about doing that because I haven't seen any hot tea around here. But it seems like, and I drink tea. I drink tea with no sugar, but I don't drink the leaf tea. You know, I just drink the regular tea. That I, I have. It's instant tea. Yes. yes. And no, so, it's a big difference. Yeah, and, and I drink mine on ice. So it's really just a refreshment, not a, uh, I guess you would say, it's not you know, exquisite. It's not some delectable flavor. It's just regular tea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So tell me about... Actually, some people are addicted to tea. Really? Yes. Just because of the caffeine? They call it well, the morning tea and the afternoon tea. Like the, the, And the, the English, they have the, the afternoon, afternoon tea time. <laughs> Yeah, I I actually my daughter was in Australia last year and she said every day at a certain time of day everybody stops working cuz it's time for tea. Tea time. Yes. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> so, what type of cigars do you enjoy smoking? Are you a big Cuban guy or are you non-Cuban guy? You like both? Actually, uh, my start with the Cuban cigars now I am smoking Monte Cristo Edmondo, but uh, I am open for all the brand. I like Dominican, Nicaraguan, Honduras. We were the agent for, uh, we start, the three brands we started, we started with Padron, or Toro Fuente, and, and, uh, and Camacho. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry, not Camacho. Davidoff. Uh, the other one, Gor Gorja Cigars. Oh, okay. And Gorka, they have a they have a different variety and they have a strong cigars. Arturo Fuente give you the variety between strong and uh, Me. medium and the the mild one. The go uh, the Padron cigars they give you in that time they give you a natural El Maduro. but lately when they introduced the Dimaggio, it was you can say it's a, a mild to medium cigar. So sometimes when, when you have a nice meal, a steak or a heavy meal, you need a strong cigar. The Cuban cigar, it won't, it's not going to be satisfying you. So you like to smoke like Padron 1964 or Padron 1926 or Don Carlos by Arturo Fuente. Actually, I enjoy all cigars, but if some I smoke it and I didn't enjoy it. I will keep shut. I don't talk about cigar. So ah. in my <laughs> shop, I don't like to complain because it's a big process, my friend. Oh yeah, it took a whole year. Some people they smoke the cigar and kill it and kill the manufacturer and kill everybody, and this is wrong because if you didn't like the cigar, somebody else will like it. Yeah, and I've had that discussion before. It's like, just because I don't like a cigar doesn't mean you won't like the cigar. We all have yes. different palates. And I mean, yes. my, you know, one of my biggest enjoyments of a cigar is just smoking a cigar that has good construction. If it smokes nice, it burns nice, you get a good draw from it. It doesn't have to be the best tobacco for me to really enjoy the craftsmanship that someone yeah. made this cigar. You know what I mean? I mean, I yes. have my preferences, but as long as the construction is really good, I'll smoke it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it's a triangle. It's the burn, the construction, and the aroma and flavor. These, If they are the three elements that are available, you will enjoy the cigar. Actually, why you don't like the cigar? Either it will be either it's bittery or harsh, or the draw is bad, or the burn is not okay, the construction is bad. It's a tobacco. And the secret in the blend and the, between different kind of manufacturer, the secret is the blend. It's like food. You can eat anything and you will feel full. But you will go for a certain cuisine because you like the ideas and the, what they call the, the, the magic with the chef who is creating that dish for you. Wow, that's, this is the idea. Yeah, that's that, and that's why you know it's it's just those special pleasures of like you say food. 
you know, whether you're having steak or whatever it is that you care for that you like, and it's cigars and coffee and tea, and here we drink bourbon and scotch and different things. So, I mean, it's all an artist. It's all artisan. You yeah. know what I mean? And so, yes. <clears throat> yeah, I, we don't, we don't, we don't talk bad about very many cigars because it is a hand product. And sometimes my favorite cigars, they won't burn good because it is a handmade product. You know what I mean? And yes, it's sometimes, yes. I don't know what happened, but you know what? I know the next one's going to be good. So that's just, I think, yeah, yeah. Con sorry. Continue. Oh, no, you're good. So let me ask you this. Like how big of a city is Kuwait? Like how how many people live there? It's around four million five hundred, the total. Uh, Kuwaitis are one million four hundred, and the other expatriates between different kind of nationalities. And so cigars are like a new thing in Kuwait over the last fifteen twenty years. No, no, no. The cigar in Kuwait is more than 70 years. Oh, wow. So Kuwait is, I mean, how is the culture there? Are they open to smoking? Uh, until until six years, you can smoke everywhere. So until now. Until six years. But now, because this is a virus, it started in the state, go to UK, go everywhere. Everybody's become green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, green I, I, you know, we ruin everything, Ali. So, yeah, you know, that's... You're a pioneer on non-smoking areas, man. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. In places where I used to be able to smoke, I can no longer smoke there. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So until six years, I told you, my friend, you can smoke even even in in front of the hospital. You can smoke, but now no, now there is should be license, location, and smoking area, and they fine you. And if somebody complains, it's the same rules. Ali, I was at a hospital in Oklahoma about twenty years ago, and it was a really old hospital. And they actually had ashtrays built into the wall of the hallways yes. at the hospital. Because you yes. you could smoke yes. everywhere. Everywhere, yes. You can go to the doctor and he's sitting and he's smoking and he's talking to you with a cigarette. Yes, that's yeah. exactly right. Now, th that would be fired or killed or something. <laughs> so I have only one thing. They don't differentiate between cigar and cigarette. Right. This is a problem. That is the problem. In the law. In the law, yes. And it makes no sense. Yes, there is no sense. I mean... There is no sense because there is different in the quality, in the in the clean, in everything. But, you know, the cigarette people are very powerful and, and, any, and, and any taxes, any rules definitely will not affect them. Right. It will only affect the cigarette people. Right. And I've made this comparison, like in the States, we have beer, we have wine, and we have liquor. And those are different categories of alcohol, and that's how they are categorized with the state, with the law department. So why do they not do the same with cigarettes and chewing tobacco and cigars and pipe tobacco? Because they're not the same. So just like alcohol, it shouldn't be... You know, alcohol, you can't just say all alcohol is the same. It's not. We have beer, wine, liquor, and so it should be the yes. same way for tobacco. Are they uh, differentiate between them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like you can, um, you, like a regular store can sell beer and wine, but they can't sell liquor, you okay. know, like scotch okay. and bourbon. So there's a difference uh, yeah. there. And you can buy tax, uh, tax why because of the tax or because of what? Just because it's a different product, it's not the same. Oh, okay. So you can buy beer at midnight at a convenience store, but you can't buy liquor unless you go to a liquor store. Uh huh. So okay. see, see, okay. that's good that they do that, but it's also an example of what they should be doing with tobacco. 
or you know, I from from the knowledge from my friend, they are struggling a lot in the state because they started it in the state to to put the cigar. I think in the state, they the cigar is a little bit different in the uh, in the tax issue. Yeah, the tax and is different, think, but the laws are the same. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Okay. Because okay, yeah, yeah. like. If they want to make it the same even in the tax. Right, right. They'd like to they make the tax the, to the FDA. But then they also want to make it the same as far as smoking. And it's like, if I'm around someone smoking a cigarette, that does not smell pleasant to me. And that's me. If you want to smoke a cigarette, I'm all for it. You knock yourself out. But I don't enjoy smelling that cigarette and vice versa. Yes. If you don't like my cigar, you don't have to smoke cigars. But my whole thing is, I'm an adult. You let me do my adult things. Yeah, this is right. But for them, they don't understand that. Right. They want to put it in one corner. They want to tax us as the same. They want to put the forbidden issues as the same. Because it's easy for them. They will say it's all tobacco. Right. No. So the tax will be all for tobacco, either chewing them, either chewing the snooze or the pipe or the shisha or the cigarette, all of them together in one tax. Now, and they put a high tax. Yes. So let me ask you this. How is Kuwait on like legalizing marijuana smoke? Oh, so I think I think we are we will be the last. Okay. The problem is, I will tell you, it's a, it's an issue. To, it's like I will tell you. You remember when it was in the state when it was the the alcohol was forbidden and right. the smuggling from Canada to the state. So you had the prohibition. And then the government said, "It's the same. We have people smuggling marijuana, smuggling everything." But until the country realized that you should tax tax to this. And make it legalized. And some of the other countries around, like in Lebanon, Syria, the people, the countries who produce these kind of drugs, when they start to legalize it, everybody will legalize because it will become very cheap. And they don't want to now lose the tax the revenue. Yes. Now it's the smugglers who are earning the money. <laughs> right. For us, for us, until the 1960s, they were a crime country selling alcohol in Kuwait. Really? But you know, the, the, yes, until the 1960s, alcohol was not forbidden in Kuwait. Wow. But now, this, when the when the countries become independent, changing the law, some of the Gulf areas, they have alcohol, like Dubai, Bahrain, Saudi, they don't have, Kuwait, they don't have. So some of the countries have, and some of them, they are dry country. I see. But I think if two or three big countries from the Arab world legalize the marijuana, everybody will legalize it because there will be a lot of benefit for the government. Well, I, I, the reason I ask that is because several states in the U.S. have legalized it. And it's funny to me that they get a free pass because we're being stifled on tobacco and cigars, but the government is allowing people to smoke marijuana. So I'm like, well, wait a minute. You know, the tobacco, we're not even inhaling a tobacco on a cigar. And you're allowing people over here to smoke marijuana, but you're not taxing it and making regulations on it. And the majority of the states here, it's completely illegal. So we're just a messed up political experiment over here right now. I think I think they want to control it in a way, and I think they will put the same cigarettes like later on. It will be the same cigarette when Philip Morris try. Uh, I think when Philip Morris will start making marijuana cigarettes, everything will be controlled and it will be all around the world. <laughs> You're probably right there. You know, it all comes from the big money. All right, Ollie, I, I have to ask you this question, man. Who's in the picture behind you? This is my picture. That is awesome. I was, the light's a little bright, so I couldn't tell exactly, but I was like, that looks like him. So I thought maybe it was you or I thought maybe it was your father. Or... 
<laughs> when I visit uh, Turkey last year, we went to one of the Sultan palaces and they dress you like a Sultan and take picture for you for memories. So I took one. I like it. So I, I love it. it. I love it. That is awesome, man. <laughs> And you've always had like the greatest beard. What did you did you start growing a beard when you were like ten years old? No, 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 man. I was a beardless. You can see the photos in my Instagram. It's only a couple of years I started it because you know sometimes for us men when we lose our hair, you can see I don't have that much hair upstairs. You really want you want to do it a different way. <laughs> so and it's. Just a look. It's go well with the cigar smoking. And Absolutely. It. And it looks great with your Panama hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what kind of stuff do you guys do at the shop? Do y'all have like cigar events like what we do in the States where like a rep from a company comes in and educates people on cigars or you do your own event where you teach yeah people how to smoke cigars what is it that you do at your shop oh usually uh, all the year we are educating people but sometimes when like like let's say uh, a visit come from nicaragua or from dominican to kuwait for us we will make an event and people they will try the cigar they are smoking enjoy it but normally we have a lunch. People sit and smoke cigars. Now we are stopped for two years because of the pandemic. But I hope everything will become okay because now there is no gathering. You cannot. You don't allow us to to sit and smoke cigars. Oh, really? Because of the coronavirus. But before we have event, we have people sitting, enjoying the samples of cigars, taking the idea about them. It's a big area. I think maybe you can you saw the video. And while they are sitting, they can watch the TV. They can see the accessory if they want. And this is the idea. And if we have a new cigar release, we'll call a couple of them, let's say 20 people. They will sit and enjoy. And we'll see the feedback of the, the new release. Okay, very nice. So let me ask you this. How's the taxes in Kuwait on cigars? Is it like super high or is it okay yeah it's a super high actually you know in kuwait it's a hundred now a hundred percent and hundred percent and and there is they are passing a law because you know some of the region in the country it's become 215 percent 215 percent 215 percent so now just they are waiting for the parliament to approve it, and to become 215 in Kuwait. So how does it work there in Kuwait? Do people get to, like, protest and say, like, hey, hey, that's not what we want. We, we, we want to smoke. If they, if they, if the summit approved it, you can say, hey, hey, nobody cares. <laughs> nobody cares. So what you need to do is get all those people on the parliament to come in and smoke cigars. Yes. We, no, but the problem is, you know, for now, for a couple of years, I'm trying to make a lobby in the Gulf. We don't have a lobby. Even in the state, there is no strong lobby for cigar smokers. We need to gather. Ah, this is the this is important. Otherwise, we'll be like the dinosaur will be vanished. Right. Because they will eat us alive. We need to have a lobby. All the others have lobbies. We need to have a lobby to defend us. Because you, if you without a lobby, you cannot defend yourself. They will yeah. eat you alive. Increase the taxes. I I speak with so many friends, even the. From the cigar, like when I met with Arturo Fuente, with Carl, with uh, with Carlito, I told them it, it it should be a world lobby and then a country lobbies because at least we can support each other by the now it's now they are starting to to do the plan packaging. This is a big problem. Yeah, it they actually got in, that. They, got, that they got start it. in Australia and now in Saudi Arabia. Plan packaging, no name on the cigar. This is a problem. Yeah, they tried to do that here, and it got uh, voted down because of freedom of expression, uh, First Amendment right, uh, free speech, because it's considered 
artistic speech with all the designs. I mean, it's beautiful artwork on the box. So if you make them do plain boxes, that would be the same as violating their freedom of speech. So we actually have won that one for now. Uh huh. But uh, here it's growing. We have one down in Saudi. We are six countries in the Gulf. One is down for plain packaging. Really? This will increase the price. It's so much, so much headache also. Destroy the, the beautiful cigar case. Some of them limited edition. They come with a velvet. They come with veneers. And then they will make it only one color. In Saudi, they make it green. Other country will make it black. And the label, they will remove the label and put only the name. Like, this is Monte Cristo. Remove it just right, Monte Cristo. And this is also, it will support faking cigars. Yeah, because it'll make it way easier. It will be so easy. <laughs> I mean, anybody can get a box and write Monte Cristo on it. Yes. Wow, that that and and are they looking at doing that now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are looking to do it. They won down. I'm telling you, one of the six countries down. Wow. So let me ask you this: like your normal cigar smoker, your everyday cigar smoker, do people smoke cigars every day there, or is it like once a week? Is it a special occasion? Do you have regular Some cigar of smokers? Yes, we have regular cigar smokers. They smoke daily. Some of them one cigar a day, some of them two cigars a day. There is some, uh, speak, uh, they smoke only in the weekend when they gather together or just to, for relax when they go to the chalet or something like that. And some of them, they smoke only a month. It's different, but mostly uh, daily smoking cigars. So let me ask you this. Does the cigar community in kuwait have all different people from all different walks of life uh you know some doctors some street cleaners yeah. you know what i mean does it bring people together like it yeah, does yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 i you know this is my idea all the cigars uh, what they call it's a social gathering normally before 10 years there were only a category of cigar smokers before the social media. Now with the social media, you can see from 23 until above, they are smoking cigars. The, the category of the, what they say, we are not going to say the average. Uh, see, the cheapest cigar you can buy, it, it's around, let's say, uh, 4 KD. The KD is $3. So three by four, this is the cheapest cigar in dollar. Okay. And how much is that? And how much is it? Three three by four. Three dollars by four. How much will be? Twelve dollars. Uh, Twelve dollars sick. Okay. It's the cheapest one. And what's the size of that? It's Corona size. Okay. So like a little bit smaller than a Robusto. Yes. Okay. Uh, smaller. The ring gauge is small, but the length is uh, bigger than the Robusto. So is the price based on the size of the Vitola? Yes, mostly is on the size, and the other on, uh, let's say, if, uh, if a limited edition or special edition or whatever. But normally, the Corona size, all of them start with twelve dollars. Okay, so I mean, you could pick different cor Corona sizes, and they still be twelve dollars. Yes, very interesting. Yes. And there is a less than the Corona is the petite, or the half Corona they call it. You know small one it will be around three and there is some of them let's 3.5 slide that. okay very interesting but this is a 20 20 minute smoke 25 minute smoke now i wanted to ask you because i think that you probably smoke more than two cigars a day how many cigars a day do you smoke normally before this pandemic it was two cigars a day okay how but much now? nowadays now one cigar man what? there is no time Yes, because actually before we are open two shift and we are all the time in the shop. When, when you are in the shop, you like the, the environment giving you the chance to smoke. Yeah. Now less time outside, always at home. The mood is not that much. So 
I start with either Robusto or Double Robusto, it will be one a day. Okay. I was gonna, I would thought you probably smoked six, seven cigars a day. No, man. No, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's only when we go to festivals. Ah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Because actually when you are in the country, there is no time for smoking, you know. It will be a waste of money because smoking a cigar back to back, you will lose the enjoyment. It will become only ritual. Right. And it should not be enjoy. I, I like to smoke my cigar slowly, enjoy the flavor, the aroma, uh, not making the cigar hot so I can enjoy it. This is the idea for me. But when we are in Havana or we go in Dominican or Nicaragua, you always <laughs> either in the field or the manufacturer and everybody's giving you cigars. So you are enjoying it. The, the mood is different. Right. And you know, the mood is important. Just smoking all. Yeah. And you know, it's funny that you say that because I used to be a really fast smoker, but I've intentionally slowed down. You know what I mean? To, to enjoy the cigar more than just puffing yeah. on it. And I mean, yeah, yeah, it's I, a big difference. I the slower I smoke, I find the more flavor profile I enjoy from it, and I I and I find also if you're not puffing on it as much, it will, it usually burns better. Yeah, and it will be you know normally people they threw the cigar onto the label. I said you can throw the cigar when it's burn your mustache because sometimes. <laughs> When it's reached like here, the full enjoyment will be. You don't want to throw the stick because it's become very enjoyable. That's because you are not smoking it so quick and not making the stick too hot. So it's not going to be bittery and harsh. So you will enjoy smoking it until the end. And big industry now become from that, they... They make the poker that they hook yeah, the cigar here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you see, this is this industry. It, it will not be. We will never grow if the people will throw the cigar until the the label. <laughs> right. Who will use this poker for? Use it for marijuana, maybe, but for not for cigars. So let me ask you this: How's the outlook of being able to open the shop up all the time again? Where, how is COVID affecting you guys now? Are y'all are y'all seeing improvement? Oh my God, COVID kill us, man! You know, since I returned from Havana on March twenty, we were closed for seven months. Wow, that's brutal. Paying rent, yeah paying rent and there is no open and after that they make it a curfew we open only four hours after that we close again for one month then it's open for a curfew until now we are limping and we don't know where we are going now also the rules of people who vaccinate and not vaccinate people who vaccinate can enter the malls or enter the shop non-vaccinated they would not allow to enter so it's there is no what they call it. There is no uh, you cannot see the light in this tunnel. People they are telling me it's in the end of this year everything will become normal, and I don't know it's right, it's really right or not because everybody's dead. People, some people they are bankrupt, some people they are closed, losing their for us because you know. You know, we try to control it, take from here and put in here just to stay alive. Now, but if it's become very longer, it's become a problem. Can you, like, still sell cigars and ship them to people? Yes, we can, but we cannot ship in the area. The problem in the Gulf, we cannot ship cigars. Nobody is accepting, like, from the courier. You need to send them in a normal mail. Normal mail. But like couriers, like FedEx, DHL, they cannot send it. They oh. will not approve cigar in between. But inside the country, there is a delivery. You can deliver. And this is who kept us alive that we can deliver cigar and uh, send them to the to your house or to your uh, whatever place you want. Okay. I was just wondering what you're doing in between when you have to be closed. I mean, that's brutal. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good one. Well, I hope it things very open cool. back up for you guys because I, I love seeing your videos when you're in the shop, the education yeah, of the yeah, product. Yeah, so much change. Yes. You, it, you it did so, so many great change. cigar accessory videos, whether it be cutters or lighters. And yeah, yeah. I, my favorite accessory video you did was the Zycar electric lighter. Yeah, 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 yeah. This one was a great video, man. And the problem is, Dicar is not doing them anymore, man. Ah, uh, I never, I never saw one. I, I saw your video, and I thought that would be really cool, and I never yeah. saw one. And now I don't it's think a, they're it's available. It's a great one. It's a great, it's a great lighter. You can, it can go for big diameter. You can, you, you can take it with you and everywhere. There is no problem with the lighter. You know, now you cannot trouble with the lighter. They will confiscate it immediately. Yeah, I, I've had lighters confiscated at the airport many times, and it's like I, I hate it because it's usually a good lighter, and I just forgot I had it. Uh, this is a big problem. Yeah, you cannot go. Uh, never, you know. I they took one lighter from me one time. Was it people lighter? And since then, I'm traveling oh. without a lighter. Wow. Yes, and in, in Charlie Gold. The problem they don't return it for you. No. They no. said yes, yes, yeah, yeah. We'll give it to you. And they throw it in a in a box with the lock, and then it's gone. <laughs> right. They will sell it. They, you never see it again. <laughs> well, Ali, thank, Ali, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us and chat. I've been wanting to do this for a long, long time with you. I love all my your pleasure, content. My pleasure, friend. I enjoy talking to you. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I wish you all the best. And I hope we will see each other. I've been, I didn't been to the state for a long time. I have so much friends there, and I hope we will have the opportunity because if I come to the state, I will take a tour. I have so much friends there. Looking forward to see them, and you are one of them. Well, I look forward to sit down and have a smoke with you, brother, and we will have maybe some tea. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I will bring the tea from here, no problem. Sounds good. <laughs> well, Ali, have a great evening, and we will talk to you soon. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the interview with Ali. Uh, we, we're a big fan of that guy. If you're not following him on Instagram, I believe it is Big Smoke KW. Uh, he, dude, he posts a lot of great content. Oh, yeah. I mean, I wish he would create content <laughs> for Cigar Talk. That's how much <laughs> content that we don't create. Yeah. You know, to me, Instagram's an afterthought these days. It truly is. Well, it truly it's become is. just, you know, the, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's running it's around a of Facebook. Yeah, yeah, it's running around it's, of Facebook. It's, it's a machine yeah. now. <clears throat> it's not not a lot of personal touch going on. And see, for uh, for those of us that are from a different generation, it is not life for us because I had to realize my children don't know about encyclopedias. Really, they don't. I would imagine that would go the same for mine. Yeah, they were born in a, in a, in an era or a generation where encyclopedia was dude old old that school. Was, that was our reference for every Everything. report we yes. ever written. Yes, you know what I mean. Go to the encyclopedia, Peter, pull it up. That was our Google. Thank you. Thank really, you. it was, and you actually had to go find it. Right, <laughs> they didn't just put, give it to you here. here and you there go. was, and there was not a, like. Well, encyclopedia says this, this, and then another source says this. Mm -hmm. The encyclopedia, encyclopedia was, was the final. The, yeah. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and if you came up with something that wasn't from the encyclopedia, it, it was like wrong. 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 You're getting an F for this one. <laughs> right. Where did you get your... Well, I read a book. What book? Was it the Encyclopedia Britannica? <laughs> <laughs> right. No Dude, did you F. remember we had encyclopedia <laughs> salesmen yes, that came. would come around, Dude, and it yes. was like... Oh no, we can't afford those. Oh no, we can make it like eight hundred payments. payments, and that's what it was: eight hundred payments <laughs> of fifty-three dollars. <laughs> right. Because every home needed because it was the Google. Oh yes, for everything. If you if you needed to know something and you knew where to find it, well, it starts with S. Then pull the S. Right, <laughs> it's in there. Now, Google. There it is. Yeah. My kids That's don't know. That's crazy, man. Yeah, I didn't ever think about it, but you know, I'm going to have to ask my kids. I was sitting there with my nephew, and he's he'll be 11 this month. And I was having him do his homework. 
and he was looking up words. He was for a spelling thing. He's looking up in a dictionary. And I was like, you look at a dictionary? He said, yeah, my mama won't let me use my phone. I looked at my sister and said, yes, yes. I said, you know what you need to do? He's like, well, I said, you need to read the dictionary from the front to the rear. And he looked at me and she said, yes. I was like, I'm sorry. I don't think I should have said that. Yeah, I would have been that. like, what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I should have said that. But he wants to build his vocabulary. And that's the best way to do it. Look in the dictionary. Because every word is in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. Yeah, he's like, I could have just read two words. <laughs> when I need it, I'll look it up. Right. <laughs> but I, and he thought about it. He's like, oh, Uncle Brian. I was like, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you like should say, be. I'm sorry. You owe him something good for Christmas. Yes. <laughs> so anyway, hey, we uh, switched cigars here. And oh, yes. I'm over here messing with the band. But it's the Davidoff Escuro Grand Perfecto. <laughs> And I'm telling you what, this is one of my very favorite sticks. Yes, sir. Mine too. It's and on that list. It's on that list. It really is. I I, I dry, I mean, I toasted it. And you can smell that maple immediately coming up off of it. I was like, yes, this is going to be a great ride, baby. It's going to be a great ride. Ooh. And the retro hell is so freaking smooth. <sighs> That's a great. This is a great stick. That's just, that's just all you have great to say. Stick. It's a great stick. Not a lot of sticks make it into yeah, the great category. Yeah, you telling the truth. But this one here, it, it's definitely great. Larry lit up. I taste that maple. <laughs> Look at him over there, looking like yeah, a pimp. Yeah, he's now. like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So anyway, and we're still drinking the old Knob Creek number. Yes, nine. sir. Yes, sir. Let's talk about Macallus cigars. Great. I mean, great. Uh, you know, great. are you going this weekend? You know that's this Saturday. Oh, man. You and your wife are supposed to go. Yeah. You need to take your wife. Have a good time. I haven't received tickets yet. It doesn't matter. I know that. Doesn't matter. You just got to show up. Yep. That'll be a great date night. There'll be a lot of people there that are going to want to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> you know me. Uh, you know what? There's want... going to be a lot of the um, uh, ambassadors there. Yeah, dude. I mean, how cool is that? That they're having an open house at their headquarters for the ambassadors. That's how they do business. That's man. how they rock and roll. That's how they do. It's all about their consumers. Yeah, man. I mean, brick and mortars. Yes, your consumers, your if ambassadors. You, if you fall within their radar, that's all they think about is you. If you fall within their radar. You know, people sit back, oh, and they don't they don't never it's all about business, they don't never think about me. That's not the deal with McAuliffe. If you fall within their radar, they think about you. Yes. And they take what you say in they really take it to heart because they want to make us happy. And they're doing a and hell of a doing job. doing it, bro. So if you're not an ambassador, look down the show notes. You can click up, on the link up, that'll take up. you over. You yes. Can sign up, and they'll send you your own challenge coin. Most definitely. And it'll have your own personal number on it. They'll send you a certificate of authentication. And uh Anyway, make sure you. Uh, Dude, you got tongue tied. I thought I that. did pretty good. <laughs> no, I, I thought I did pretty good. Certificate. It was like you knew that I didn't say what I was gonna say, but it sounded just enough like it. You're like, I'm gonna let him have a pass on it, but no, wasn't good enough, enough for, for you. you. <laughs> so anyway, uh, let's talk about the leaf. You know, last week Scott was on the show. And he filled in for you. And I'm going to tell you, man, he did a great job. His knowledge is impressed. It is impeccable. It really is, impresses me, like, a lot. There's yeah. a fly over you here. You didn't see me trying to get rid of him earlier? No. <laughs> you need to clean, clean your glasses, I do. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, the Leaf, dude, I mean, we were talking about it. Everything they've got going on, they've got a great facility. You walk in, there's a nice lounge area. You can sit there. They've got pipes. They've got pipe tobacco. They've got cigars. Accessories. Accessories. And coffee. Then you walk into the Noah's Ark of <laughs> humidors. <laughs> I like that. I mean, Noah's it's huge. Ark. Yes. And I mean, you could be in there seriously for 40 days for and 40 nights. 40 days and 40 nights and still won't see yeah, everything. No. Because there's a secret door in the back. Right. <laughs> so anyway, then you go in the Havana room. Uh, and I mean, this is just a badass lounge. He's mm. got lockers for the members. Yes, sir. And so if you are around Abilene within 50 miles, I highly recommend that you go by and check out the Leaf at North 2nd at 1166 North 2nd. 
Hey, we doing it. We doing it. I got you. And then we'll loop it back around. Loop it back around. Just as long as it wasn't Sullivan. Hey, as long as I'm not falling on the floor. <laughs> ah. Boom. Okay. So. But you fell on the porch. Anyway, look down the show notes, <laughs> and there is a phone number to the Leaf. They are working on their website. Yes. I've had a lot of feedback that guys say, hey, man, we want to be able to order from the Leaf, but we want to be able to do it from the website. And Jay listens, and they are working on that. And if you want to, though, you can give them a call. Yes. A lot of times you'll talk directly to Scott or, or Jay. Jay. They'll uh-huh. take your order, fix you up, and you, I mean, dude, everybody I know that works with Jay loves Jay. Oh, yes. So anyway, let's talk about the government banning all <sighs> tobacco products. I mean, here, here's my question, and this is a hypothetical, you guys. They did not ban all tobacco products, but. You know, you never know what could happen. But let's just say that the government bans all tobacco products. What are you going to do? I'm still going to smoke. All right. And what does that look like? It'll be illegal. Okay. Where are you going to get them? Oh, there are ways to get them. You keep forgetting I was a cop. There are ways to get any and everything. Okay. So you've been a cop. You know where to get things. Who are you dealing with to get these things? They're going to be the new drug dealer. My drug is going to be tobacco. And is there a stiff penalty for dealing tobacco in this new regime? It would have to be. Right. Because in order for you to ban it, you would have to put legislation in place to ensure that people do not sell or consume it. It'll be just like marijuana is at this time in other states. You right. know what I'm saying? You know, you or can't, Texas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't sell it nor can you consume it in the state of Texas. Right. But I went back to Illinois and you can sell it. It's recreational there. You can sell it and you can use it. But it, the the problem is for those that are outside that state they still find ways of doing it. Sure. See, it's going to be prohibition again. I just pray it doesn't take 13 years for them to realize that they made a mistake like they did with alcohol back then it's it's i'm you've said this before and i agree with this totally that's my right i agree to smoke a cigar is my right you're an adult i'm an adult you can do whatever you want so to why as long you, as it doesn't infringe on other people yeah, so why are you legislating my right i get you I, and, but but we're not getting into that the thing is it's already happened so then you still infringed upon my right. Right. They did. Mm-hmm. It's done. Mm-hmm. That's what we're talking about. So here. that's why my issue is you've infringed upon my right. I'm going to be I'm going to be a big pro, uh, proponent. You're going to be a criminal. I, I accept that that title. Then. I accept that title. And where are you going to smoke at home? Because you can't go anywhere else. Right. So, so the landscape is changing. Oh, yes. I mean, you're no longer able to go to the Leaf. Nope. You're no able to hang out, nope. smoke. Nope. Where are you going to smoke? I mean, but. What are you going to, what, what, what cigars do you think you're going to be able to smoke? You're still going to be able to smoke cigars because. I don't know, but what kinds? The ones that are out now. Because you can't get, they're going to stop it and it's still uh, surplus. They're still surplus. So you have to do something with that surplus. And it's the same thing with marijuana. You find you we find marijuana farms everywhere. You're gonna find tobacco farms everywhere. You're gonna find people out on the street smoking it still. They just when they see you walking up, they do like they do with marijuana. They cup it or throw it away and then walk away and blow the smoke in the air. If I can't catch you in the actual act, I don't have a crime to, to uh, charge you with. It's not gonna change it. It just made it illegal. Well, it also affects and this is my thing. I'm like, you know what? I would probably be done. I I would, because I'm not, and it's not that I would care that it's illegal. That's not my problem with it. My problem is now that it's an illegal product, you have zero recourse if you buy an entire box of cigars that's complete shit. If the yeah. quality can construction the quality control goes out the window if a product is illegal because what are you going to do about it but see here's the same thing and i keep i I hate that i keep bringing up marijuana when you sell bunk marijuana to somebody you got an issue because they're going to come back after you 
They do one of two things. They don't. They, they okay, either don't. They also, either don't buy from you anymore, which means you've lost a consumer, right? Or they come after you because you've taken their money and sold and them then, some bucks. And then, if you are getting quality product, are you paying more? You are. So, like a ten dollar, twelve dollar stick. How much is it on the black market? Probably be fifteen, twenty dollars. I think minimum of twenty. And then I think it's more then, like twenty five. Then here, here, here comes the issue. There's no more sharing changes it it kills the community the community it, it really does because now i really can't afford to give you a stick because that's 25 dollars just walked out the door well i mean and if i want to get you one it's 50 bucks yeah. if i want to get larry one now we're at 75 because i got me one and two others right i just build a, a dub i mean a dollar right now we call a dollar hundred dollar bill hundred dollars a dollar i've spent a, a dollar roughly with three sticks and I only got one out of that. Right. Versus now I can buy a box for a hundred, certain sticks, box of a hundred, a box for a hundred, and I got what, 10, 15, possibly 20? Cigarettes, the same thing. A pack of cigarettes cost seven dollars now. That's crazy. And it's because of the tax. They say we and see here's the thing that got me. They would get rid of tobacco products now, but you didn't do it with cigarettes. So all you did was tax it even more. Right. And then they found out the repercussions of the tax because people are bootlegging cigars. I mean, cigarettes now. Sure. They're bootlegging them. They're hijacking trucks that are carrying cigarettes. Or you're going to states that are not charging the tax, yeah, like New Mexico. Yeah, they don't charge the state tax. The right. federal tax is still there. Right. But now you're not paying $7 for the Now for you're the paying four fifty. Four fifty. But see, the point is, where, the, where there is a demand, there's always going to be a supply. I... I have no doubt. And that's that's the issue. Where there's a demand, there's always going to be a supply. So no matter what we think or what we do, it's going to be there. Check the connection there on the outside. I mean... Hold on. Unplug it and plug it back in. One. One. The one that's lined up with that red light. The, the one. Something, man, because no. boy, it might be on my side, though. Yeah, I did. <clears throat> I'm like, fuck, the camera's not even turning on. All right, flip it back on my side, Larry. (laughs) 
So mainly what I'm saying is I think the quality control goes out the window. And, yeah, you might be able to get some good sticks, but they're going to cost you. And with the community taking the hit that it would take, I'm not – this this cigar here, I really love smoking cigars. I think you know that. Yeah. But if you take away the community, I'm not going to keep smoking cigars because one of the main things that I smoke cigars for is the community. You know what I mean? And if if I'm not hanging out with other guys smoking cigars, then I'm not going to just keep on smoking cigars just to smoke cigars. I promise you, the ability to smoke with other guys will not diminish you just have to be a little bit more secretive to do it because people are doing it today. Like if I drive up to Dallas, you think I'd be able to find a place to smoke? Oh, hell yeah. Dallas is a metropolitan area. I get you. There, there are opportunities everywhere in a metropolitan area. I'm, I'm, I'm just drawing off my police experience where people smoke weed, people smoke crack, people smoke heroin, and place in, out in the open together. Or you know about the trap houses where they go to certain houses and they just hang out there and they smoke crack all night long. I'm not putting cig- cigars. <laughs> That's in, not the kind of community I just I'm looking say, for. I'm not putting cigars <laughs> in that type of uh, environment. But what I'm saying is the opportunity will still be there. Although it'll be I, illegal. I it'll be like Betty the Crack Horse, scoot yeah. over. <laughs> I, although the, the it will be illegal, it will still be there. And here's my thing. What are they thinking they're gonna do? They think they're gonna stop people from smoking? No, you're not. The the war on drugs has been going on since Reagan, and has it stopped? Well, really, since Nixon. Yeah, has it stopped it? Right. No, I understand that. It's it's not going to stop it. So for people to think that they can legislate your 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 uh, activities, you you don't. You only thing you do is just make my activity illegal. Right. Now, certain things, yeah, it should be illegal because of what it does. It infringes upon others. It causes great harm. Like what? Crack. No, I think crack should be legal. <laughs> Dude, you don't know. I, I don't care. <laughs> That's the problem. You don't know, so you don't care. <clears throat> but when you've, when but you've been an, out there. If you're, you're an adult. No, you don't understand the things that people do for crack or when they're on crack. It's, too, it's, it's, a, it's a totally different mindset. It really is. Because we're talking about cigars being illegal. Right. The things people do for crack are way more worse than that. You got people prostituting their children over this stuff. You got people selling their children over this stuff. You got people selling themselves over this stuff. You got people robbing. Nobody's going to rob anybody to get a cigar. Because the people that know. There have the been pe- cigar shops that got robbed. Yeah, the cigar shop. But you're not going to go into this lady's house and steal her VCR for a cigar. You're not. But people Let would do that. Something. Let me tell you why I would never do that. And I'm going to be 100% honest with don't you. Don't talk about the, Don't talk about the VCR part of it. <laughs> I don't know who would give me any money for a VCR. I know this, I'm talking about the actions. I'm talking about the actions. I mean, I go people, down to the pawn shop and be like, hey, man, what do you give me? I'll uh, give you a punch in the face you know, if you don't get out of here with that thing. The thing is, <laughs> there are different illegal acts that come with that, just like heroin. If you don't, give a, <clears throat> if you don't allow a person to get their heroin fixed, they will kill you. They will kill you to get the Jones and oh, I thought you said to get their hair fixed. Heroin fixed. <laughs> I was like, wow, you need a haircut. <laughs> no, no, heroin fixed. They're, when they're Jones, and they will do anything for that. And murder is not out the, out the window. They will kill you to get that. I get you. You're not going to kill but anybody that's where, for a that's cigar. Where if it infringes upon other people's rights, that's then okay, saying. I get and you. And where is this infringing upon somebody else's rights? Where does cigar, cigarette smoking, pipe smoking... Dipping, maybe, chewing. Maybe, si- maybe if I take it to the extreme and what? I play the other side is the smell of that smoke offends me. It don't come around. But I'm walking. You're smoking out in your backyard and it's drifting over into my yard. Dude, and that's air. In I, California, that's a thing. Yeah, because people were complaining about barbecuing. You barbecuing in your backyard. This is in the, the fresh air. You don't like it? Take your ass in the house. Right. I'm with you, dude. But see. The problem is, you. I, I, I said I was legis- playing dev, dev, devil's, advocate. devil's advocate. But see, the Thank point you. is, people want to legislate your activities. You can't legislate my activity if it's not infringing upon somebody else's rights. I agree. Or causing them great bodily harm. You know, I am one hundred and fifty percent about personal rights. That's my thing. But 
I'm playing devil's advocate here, devils. <laughs> and, you know, there are people that would say that you're infringing on my rights because I can't breathe fresh air because your smoke is coming over the fence. And you know what's going to happen after that? What? You can't talk around people because your breath stinks now. Or... Your voice hurts my, my ears. ears. Yeah. Leave. Right. I mean, but that's... but See, the problem is... Outlawing so, tobacco is the same thing where they're overstepping their yes. bounds and you have natural percussions yeah. from that. Repercussions. Repercussions. Well, People. percussions is a vibration. <laughs> percussions is an instrument. <laughs> but anyway, people are getting too too damn soft. Everything hurts my feelings, and if it hurts my feelings, then it should be against the law. No. Grow. Put on your big panties, your big draws. Stand out there and just deal with stuff. Right. Because I promise you, there are things that we can do here in America that you can't do in a Muslim country because they'll cut your right arm off. Well, it was like I was interviewing Ali earlier. They don't have alcohol they there. They can't have alcohol there because they, they are a, an orthodox Islamic uh, country. Right. And alcohol is no. My daughter's been over there for three years. She's talking about that. She said, I can't stand this because she loves to drink her beer every once in a while. So I said, what do you do? She said the same thing you said about do. I get some tea because tea is the big thing over there. Does she like it? She does it, but that's all she can do. Well, I didn't know. Maybe she adapted to it. She's uh, not a fan. No. Nah. Because I would like to try it now after yeah. talking to Ali. Yeah. No, she does, she's, she, she says it's dark. They like that well, stuff. Well, he, he, he said it, it, it comes in all different. The like one, there was green tea, at. light tea, and dark tea, and something else. Mm-hmm. And it's the fermenting of the tea leaves. And so I was like, you know what? That actually sounds interesting to me. You know what I mean? I guess what? It'd be illegal over here later on. Could be. You're well, you know what's funny them. is when I asked him about smoking cigars and he was talking about. You Americans started this whole green thing. <laughs> and I was like, yep, we got some uh, people over here. Mm-hmm. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. And, but, you know, what we do a lot of times carries around the world. Mm-hmm. And most people look at it and say, we, we still not going to do it. Mm-hmm. Because in the end. Let me oh, ask you a question. Uh-huh. How's that Davidoff Oscuro Grand Perfecto? As we said earlier. Great. Great, dude. This is a. You just saw the, the ash I tapped off of it. It was a stack of them. And I was like, I don't want them falling on my shirt. <laughs> you be looking at me. Here we go again. <laughs> How's yours, Larry? He gives two thumbs oh, up. Wish I had two more hands. <laughs> yeah, well, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> that way I could give four middle fingers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you went there with it. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I had to reel it back in. So anyway, uh, you know, it's just a discussion that I've heard at you know different places. Actually, Kyle asked me that question, and he was shocked when I said I would probably just give up smoking cigars. And he was like, everybody else says they would just go to the black market. Mm-hmm. And my thing is, on a black market, quality control's not there. You look at Cuba. Then you Dude, do. how many shitty fake Cuban cigars are there? Then you don't shop there anymore. True. But you there's d- still going to be but a plethora <laughs> of crap cigars. And then when you find that place. And I spend $25 a piece and get three shitty ones. Okay. What does that do to the community? Okay. Now you're looking at only. No, no, no. You know what that does to the community? What? Now we talk more. Because, okay, where'd you get those from? And now those that are not selling the crappy, the shitty stuff, they start getting more customers because you're selling quality. You see what I'm saying? I because the rest saying. of the world is going to still keep. I guess Nicaragua's going to kill. They're going to still keep doing what they're doing. Honduras, everybody's going to still keep doing what they're doing. But America's just not going to be smoking them. It's still going to come in. The Coast Guard is going to be looking for those planes now. Right. <laughs> Coming in with tobacco. <laughs> or, or maybe they roll them here and they're just dropping bales. Just dropping bales. <laughs> <laughs> just dropping the bales and we still got secret rollers. There you go. <laughs> That's a good job. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now, whoever's on the black market doing that, yeah. I'm signing up. I'm your customer. <laughs> so, but anyway, I just, I Kyle asked me that question. And I thought it was an interesting it point is. of view because... It's easy to say, yeah, I'm just going to keep smoking, but I'm going to go to the black market. We don't know what that looks like 
And so I understand if you're on either side of the fence on that argument, but let me ask you this question though. So you're saying the quality will go down, but you got to realize the rest of the world is still smoking cigars. It's just America that's not smoking cigars for so, now. Uh, for now, because just like Ali said, everything trickles down, and countries still don't follow what we do. So you're gonna still have countries. You can still have continents that still smoke cigars. Always. So, so always. So now you're gonna have, legally. Always. Legally. Yes, so yes. now if you drop your quality in your in your product, you're not just affecting America, you're affecting your sales across the world. So now you're not selling to these other countries, these other continents. So what, I, yeah, so but, who's the stupid one in this? It would be me. That's making these cigars because, oh, I just send them shit. But then the word gets out and nobody wants to buy your stuff anymore. Now you're not making money. So the thing is you still got to keep up your quality because you still have people in the rest of the world. So would, let's just say Arturo Fuente, would uh-huh. they stay in business? Yeah, they just leave the United States. But how much business are they doing here and how much money would they lose? Compared to the rest of the world? Yeah. It wouldn't be that big. Really? It would you got to understand. I would like to know the you, percentage of many, cigars they many, sell here versus the rest of the world. How many people live in the United States? What is it, 160 million? Something no, like 300 and Three, something million. 300 and something million. There are billions of people in the world. And you understand what a billion is because we talked about a the million seconds. seconds versus a billion seconds. Right. So you got to understand, we don't even have a billion here. Right. We don't. We're not even close. No. So you understand that there are billions, and we're not just talking about one or two billion people on the on the planet. Well, there's seven in China. Thank you. So now you got to understand, and they smoke in China. So now you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna mess up your your, your product because of what the United States did. But let's think about this too. There's not seven billion people in China with income levels to have disposable income to buy cigars. That that percentage shrinks down really low. I promise you. Now I'm not saying there was close. not people that doesn't have money, but I, I, I promise you, there's close enough. There's a close enough number to what the amount that's smoking in the United States that does smoke in in China. Right. Let's just say the exact same amount of numbers. So in China. You, hold on. Let's say let's just say there's a hundred. No, no. Let's say there's twenty million cigar smokers in America. If you have 20 million in China right now, that's 40 million. If you take away 20 million, you just talk about China. Now you got to talk about Europe. Okay, but I'm still talking. Okay, well, there's not 20 million people in Europe smoking cigars now. You don't know that. They don't even have 20 million people in their country. Who told you that lie? I'm just making shit up. <laughs> I'm just saying, who told you that lie? <laughs> oh, that's that little book in man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. It's not a country. I didn't say the UK. I That's said what Europe. I, was I said Europe. So in London, <laughs> there's not 20 true, million people. True, true. So anyway, I, I, I find it a fascinating rabbit hole to go down. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. And just. Yes, I got on that soapbox. Because, really yeah, you quick. did. I mean, <laughs> heaven forbid anybody want to legalize crack. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> nah, man. Don't put me in charge. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, it's a free for all. Crack is a scourge, man. I, you know what? You're right, and God. I, I get your point of view, and I, you know, I would even say I agree with you. That should not be legalized because of the repercussions yes. that come from it. Yes. And so, I, I can understand that. You take away that's cig- one of the few. You take away cigars, people will start smoking crack. <laughs> you just made the crack deal happen. <laughs> no, no. I, 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 I would even say maybe. You say no heroin and no crack. Crack. That's it. Other than that, you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, because you got shrooms, but those are natural. Weed is natural. I got you. Because those things are manufactured. Those the chemistry is changed in crack and heroin. And you're an adult. Make yeah, your decision. Make your and decision. if you die, you die. Yeah, you made that decision. I mean, if yeah. I'm in a car driving 145 miles an hour and I wreck and kill myself, that was my choice. That's your truth. So, you know, every man for himself, but also you're responsible for yourself. Mm -hmm. And this hasn't killed anybody enough to the point where I think it should be illegal. Absolutely. A hundred percent. hundred percent. I don't think it'll ever be outlawed a hundred percent because the amount of tax revenue that the United States would lose. And you know how much business the South 
especially Florida <laughs> and Atlanta, Atlanta, Texas, the Virginias, the can, can, all those areas that are where the tobacco farmers are. You know how much how much revenue is lost from that, right? Because we're not just talking about you said <clears throat> all tobacco, so that's not just cigars. No, that's across cigarette. the board, across the board. <clears throat> you know how much revenue is lost from that? Who? Hmm. That's why I don't think it would happen. They they'll legislate the hell out of it, but they're not going to get rid of it. I no. Can't see that. I can't see that. They'll tax the shit yeah, out of yeah. it, but yeah, yeah. they're already doing that. Yeah. But anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that show. We want to say thank you to our Patreon members, the Light em Up crew. Uh, we're getting ready to record the Light em Up crew show yes, next. Sir. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you guys. If you look at the end of this video, you'll see the Patreon members and who supports the show. And we just want to say thank you. If you'd like to be a Patreon, look down the show notes. Yes. You can click on a link, become a uh, Patreon, and you'll be part of the Light em Up crew. We have guys hang out and on the Discord talking about cigars, talking about bourbon, cooking. Everything. It's a great community. Yes, it is. And then also we do the after show, and then there's other benefits. But anyway, hope you enjoyed the show, and until next week, waka waka. Waka waka.